Hey everyone, today, I want to talk about something that might not be on your radar, but is super important for understanding how our bodies work, especially when it comes to bone health. We're diving into a condition called fibrous dysplasia. Now, before you think, oh, that sounds complicated, don't worry, I'm here to break it down in a way that's easy to understand, relatable, and hopefully, a bit engaging too. So, let's start with the basics. Fibrous dysplasia is a developmental abnormality, which is a fancy way of saying that something goes a bit off during bone development. It's caused by a mutation in a protein called GS-alpha. This mutation messes with the way our bones form and remodel. Instead of the nice, strong, lamellar bone that our bodies need, we end up with this immature, woven bone that just doesn't do the job right. Imagine trying to build a sturdy house, but instead of using bricks, you only have straw. That's kind of what's happening here. Now the interesting part is that this condition usually shows up in people under 30. It can be a bit sneaky, too, because often it's found incidentally. Picture this. You go in for a routine x-ray, maybe for a sprained ankle or something, and the doctor says, Hey, we found this lesion. You're thinking, What lesion? I feel fine. But that's fibrous dysplasia for you, often asymptomatic, just hanging out quietly until someone stumbles upon it. When doctors look at the x-ray, they're on the lookout for specific signs. They typically see what's called a ground glass appearance, or a punched-out lytic lesion with well-defined margins. If you're like me, you might wonder what that means. Essentially, it's like looking at a piece of frosted glass. There's something there, but it's not clear, not solid. It's a sign that the bone isn't developing as it should, and that's where the trouble starts. Now let's talk about how we deal with fibrous dysplasia once it's diagnosed. Most of the time, treatment doesn't involve surgery. Instead, doctors often recommend non-operative methods. This means things like oral analgesics, pain relievers, and bisphosphonates, which are medications that help manage pain by slowing down bone loss. It's all about keeping things manageable and allowing the body to cope with the condition without jumping straight into surgery, which can be important. However, there are times when surgery becomes necessary. If someone suffers a pathologic fracture, meaning a fracture that occurs in a bone that is already weakened by the disease, or if there's a risk of one happening, then surgical intervention is on the table. The same goes for cases where fibrous dysplasia leads to bony deformities, like coxa vara, scoliosis, or limb length discrepancies. It's like trying to fix a car that's pulling to one side. Sometimes you have to get under the hood and make some adjustments. Now, let's get a little deeper into the science behind this. The pathophysiology, if you will. The mutation in the GNAS gene leads to a failure in the normal remodeling process of bone. Instead of transitioning from that primitive bone structure to mature lamellar bone, the body gets stuck. It's like trying to upgrade your phone but getting stuck in an endless update loop. The result? you end up with isolated areas of immature trabecular bone surrounded by dysplastic fibrous tissue. And guess what? This tissue doesn't mineralize or remodel like it should. What's really interesting is that these lesions are often active during childhood, growing and expanding as kids grow. But once they hit skeletal maturity, they usually become inactive. If you have a monostotic lesion, which means it's only affecting one bone, it grows in proportion to how that bone grows. On the other hand, if you're dealing with polyostotic lesions, where multiple bones are affected, things can get a bit more complicated. The growth of these lesions can vary based on the severity of the disease, which can lead to some pretty significant challenges. So, why does any of this matter? Well, understanding fibrous dysplasia is crucial for anyone who might be affected by it, whether directly or indirectly. If you're a patient, knowing what's going on in your body can help you feel more in control. And for those who aren't affected, it's a reminder of how complex and fascinating our bodies are. It's a call to appreciate the intricacies of bone health and the importance of early detection and appropriate management. In a world where we often take our health for granted, 
Conditions like fibrous dysplasia remind us to pay attention to the signals our bodies send us. Whether it's an incidental finding on an X-ray or something more serious, being informed is key. So, if you or someone you know might be dealing with this condition, don't hesitate to reach out to a healthcare professional. Knowledge is power, and understanding fibrous dysplasia is just one piece of the puzzle in our journey toward better health. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you found this information helpful and enlightening. Remember, our bodies are amazing, and understanding how they work can empower us to take charge of our health. Until next time, take care of yourselves.